This is the It's My Time Podcast with Asher Chua. And how are you been, sir? Can't complain. Can't complain. A lot going on. Can't uh, on a whole bunch of different levels. But man, I've been watching the, your stuff, man. Loving it. Loving it. Thank you. Proud. Of, super proud of you. Thank you, you are very much. Your gift. Thank you. I, I definitely feel it. And it's funny because uh, when I think back to our, our last conversation, I feel like your your um, podcast episode number 19 was where I, I kind of um, stopped posting after that one at the end of February of last year. And that's with being in Puerto Rico, trying to work remotely. But at the same time, I, I just felt like I was doing way too much. I was trying to do the podcast do the extreme coaching, do the real estate, all at the same time as starting a new job. And mm. I was like, I needed to, to step back, but I, I stepped back maybe a little bit too long. But mm. thankfully, um, Donald, uh, the voice that helps me with the editing and the voiceover yeah, um, with the intro, he's definitely been a big help just encouraging me to continue to uh, keep going or at the very least share the recordings that we've done with everyone else that gave me their time. So I was like, okay, we got a little bit in um, towards the middle of the year over the summer. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because right around that time, like the views and everything peaked and I, I wasn't even looking at that. I was just like, okay, just put something out there and forget about it. And then finally near the end of the year, it started this year. I was like, okay, I've, I've got to do something like, laying around feeling bad for myself it it it's not good and also I, right. I just I felt bad um seeing other people whether it's friends or family that cared about me feeling worse for me than I felt for me and I was like okay I'm, I'm tired of feeling bad for myself so I just got back to putting out one a week and then I was like, maybe I'll do something creative. I, I found the recordings with uh, with Ryan when he was freestyling in the in the car mm -hmm. um, at the prayer line at the uh, the retreat. I think back from like 20, 2018, I, I think it was. So mm -hmm. I was like, hey, I found these. Are you cool with me putting them out? And he's like, yeah, go ahead. So I, I went ahead and shared those a couple of times. Just try something a little different. But mm -hmm. I, I appreciate that compliment. Oh, yeah, man. Just, just know people are watching. I think a lot of times people, uh, when they do things like this, this is one of the things that uh, I use this imagery that I think a lot of people miss. And that is we don't plant seeds and then sit and watch uh, where we planted them to see the, 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 the plant grow. We don't do that because we know intuitively that that's really a wasted thing right. to do but we do that with other things right right we, we we do something on social media we do something with a person in relationship and we just expect things to just kind of happen and we want to be there when they happen and that's not your job your job is you know that's why i like the, the biblical verse where it says uh that paul planted the apollo water is but god gives the increase that that is not wait so uh, that so that again uh, there's a there's a biblical verse uh let me find it uh where mm -hmm. paul is making a point uh because i think that the disciples his his disciples are making some statement relative to uh a another person out there who is uh named apollos who's out there preaching the gospel and he's not in their circle of people right and so uh uh they they they're having a problem with what he's doing and and um jesus kind of talked about this but but uh um uh, uh, yeah no jesus talked about this uh right um i'm trying to find out on gotcha. okay i guess i i was just saying paul because i i thought you were relating back to where you started the story yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well well it, it, it is kind of I'm just using the backdrop of that that Jesus also talked about this too, right? Oh, so okay. Okay. In first first Corinthians three, it says, uh, this is Paul talking. He says, right. I planted Apollos watereth, but God gave the increase. 
So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. So Okay, so that was yeah. verse six. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the point, the point is, is that, um, you know, we don't need to be paying attention to it because what we do, we just need to be faithful with what we need to do. And, and I'm seeing that even in what I'm doing. Mm. Um, uh, you know, if I did what I, what I, what I think I should do, even with, you know, we're talking about the book that I wrote, uh, discover your gift. Right. Uh, if I did what I thought I would, you know, be, you know, trying, trying to chart out, chart out a plan and an agenda and, you know, and that's what a lot of people do. And I'm not saying there's not a place for that, but they, mm. you know, they plan out an agenda. I want to have this many followers by this and this, and I want to have this many followers by this and, and all these other things. And, 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 and the problem is, is that I don't think there's any, the problem with people is that, is that none of this stuff is wrong. It's just that we need to put it in an order or a context or a process that aligns with a higher principle. Mm -hmm. For me, that's the gospel, right? right. That's God. Uh, for somebody else, it might be something else. So I, I think you should have all these things that you, you do, but you don't need to be bound or put in bondage by them, right? Right. So, so one of the things I do is, you know, I, I, I wrote the book. I'm going to finish writing the other two books, but I'm just letting things kind of lay out in a normal way. And the way this has happened with us is we have uh, focused study groups at my church, book focused study groups. And so we've uh, really just kind of blown up hmm. in terms of, uh, you know, uh, really being able to impact people's lives in these focused study groups. And so the book is kind of, slowly, you know, really being impactful in people's lives, first in our circle of, 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 of community. So the people that are close to me, then, mm -hmm. you know, our church community. Right. And, and, you know, if it's God's will, we'll, we'll just keep moving uh, to, to increase that circle of influence from the book, because what we're trying to do is starting to really take hold. And sometimes you don't really know what God's trying to do with, a, with something you're doing until you start to just go do it and you start to see how it manifests itself. So it, it man, it's just been, been just a blessing. Uh, just everything that's kind of come from that. And that's, you know, and the other part is that my wife and I both do do it. So right, right. That's, that's really a blessing. That's beautiful. That, it's, that's one of the things I, I really wanted to ask you about, because I know from being on the, the prayer line together and just talking with you, um, on and offline, I know a big part of writing the book was also the class that you've implemented within your church. Yeah, and I was wondering just how's that gone throughout what was oh, last man. year and just since then, like how has it grown? How's it just? It, it is. It is just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, this this recent class, we had over eighty people in the class. We had to oh, kind wow. of have these breakout groups. And, you know, at first, you know, we were kind of wanted to, um, we didn't want it to get bigger than 12, but we said, you know, we we prayed about it. And I said, we we don't need to be putting limitations on what God can do. So let's just see what happens. And the group grew to like 80 people <laughs> got involved. Right. And uh, so we did breakout groups and the breakout groups just were, were just huge. So now we realize that, that there's a way that God wants to do this. And I think the pandemic has created another platform and arena for the gospel to be spread that's not localized, right? right? And so I think our abilities, that, that, that it's available to us that we can be having these focused study groups around the book and ministering because it, what happens is the book is the, the focal point and we're going through the chapters of the book, mm -hmm. but uh, it's also um, um, uh, creates community, which to me is at the heart of it. To right. really discover your gift, it, it's just very important that you have community because we actually had a discussion about that. Yeah. Like when we're talking about your the 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 guy, that's part of the whole uh, divine quest, the journey of discovering your gift. One of the things we talk about is the guy who mm -hmm. you know that that person in your life. You know, and we I use the analogies of people like. I use, you know, uh, uh, secular analogies like Obi-Wan Kenobi was to Luke Skywalker or, uh, you know, Merlin uh, to, Ar uh, you know, Arthur. Right, right. Or, or, you know, or Nathan and Samuel to David, you know what I'm saying? So, 
So everyone who who God calls to a call a great calling, he 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 re aligns somebody into your life who um, um, who will help you guide you in the direction you need to go. And so, of course, people are on the call because it's you know prim primarily a, a faith community. It's like, well, what if you don't have a person in your life? What if what if Jesus is your 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 guide? And I'm not saying I said I told him I said I'm not I'm not saying that's not the case. Mm -hmm. um, but 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 there's really no biblical example for it, and yeah. there's really no secular example for it. We need each other, right? Right? You know the reason why we know each other is because of the right prayer exactly. Call. That that's what I was gonna say. It's the prayer call through BU. That's how we met. Right. 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 So, so you need people, you know, uh, uh, needing them and, and uh, being needy relative to them are two different things. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> but when I say needing them, I mean, they are important that you need to be open to and available for that kind of guidance. Right. But I'm not telling you to be running around saying, man, can you guide me? Man, can you guide me? Can you help me? Can you help me? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying focus, keep your head focused on the prize of what you should be doing and make sure you're putting your energies there. And as that well-worn quote says that I believe is true is that when the teacher, I mean, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. It is you growing and developing and becoming who you should be that, that, that allows the light of your you becoming who you are uh, going to become to, 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 to bring attention to the person that God wants to put in your life to guide you on to your full destiny. Right. Right. So I, I, I'm not sure if that's what you asked me, but no, anyway. that, that's exactly what I asked you. And, okay, and all right. it's, it's, <laughs> it's right there because it, like just the last statement that you ended on when the student is ready, the teacher will come. It just, it just, that's been resounding in my head because I don't know if I shared this with you before, but growing up, my nickname was teacher mm -hmm. and it didn't click until I asked my dad a few years back or maybe a year or two ago. And I was like, dad, what, what does chicha mean? Because it, in um, where we're from in Cameroon, we speak uh, French as a primary language, but they also speak like the dialect. So you get that um, pidgin or like broken English that, we speak so teacher to us would sound like chicha chicha mm -hmm. <laughs> so i was like okay that's that's been my nickname for as long as i can remember it it's like what does that mean and he was like oh it, it means teacher like because you've always been one to want to share information with people want to educate because i can remember back when i visited my dad for the first time in um uh when I was four years old was the first time I came to the US. He was in uh, seminary school at Lee University. And where think, Liberty, Liberty, right? Okay. No, Lee, Lee University in Lee Cleveland, University. Cleveland, okay. Tennessee. Gotcha, gotcha. So um, he was here, I think that was in 94. Mm -hmm. He's either here, I think from like 92 to 90. I want to say 1992, he was here, but basically my mom and I had a chance to come visit him for about a period of a month. And when I went back, I was like telling everybody like, oh man, like I went to America. Um, this is what's different. This is this, like just your little kid, just sharing things that are always, um, that you've seen the things you experience. Like, um, obviously we, we all have houses. We live like the middle-class life back in Cameroon. And I, I kind of found it funny when I've, came to the U.S. for the, the um, to stay in 97 and mm -hmm. starting school soon after the following year is just like people would ask you questions with like do you have houses do you guys live in the bush because like I later came to understand now that okay it's ignorance just for not knowing like they don't mean anything any malice by it like some people maybe did but I kind of, I got over that over time, but it's like a lot of people just inquire and ask questions based on what they understand. But just going back to what you said about your, your gift will make room for you and understanding what your gift is and being open to accepting that and just moving in the direction that God will move your life and just yeah. 
even sometimes I know some people, a lot of people nowadays don't really like to reference God or be spiritual or have the Christian connotation behind it. But every time it's like you have that voice in the back of your head, whether some yeah. other people will say it's your conscious or different things like that. But when you listen and when you move, when you should move, it goes a long way and it really makes a difference as to um, whether you're on track or you're off track. And it's not just one of those things that just clicks and appears magically, but when it's working and when you're working according to that plan, like a lot of things go much smoother than they would have or they have been. Right. And to your point about needing people or how did you say it being needy versus needing, needing people needing people so for me i know the prayer line and you guys are definitely people that i need in my life and um it wasn't the first time last year but i know when i started to kind of go through it i didn't want to be quote unquote needy so that's why it's like i pulled back but at the same time, I was pulling back because I I needed I needed time with myself to where I was like, okay, you got to get up, do your devotional and things like that yourself, Asher, mm -hmm. so that um, you don't become needy of the information every day. Because I, I at times I was just getting on and I was like, oh man, there's so much good information here. I've just got to get it all. And it's like, right. you can't get it all. Like you get what you can. And then you just work with that as much as I might be getting information from people that are five, 10, 20 mm -hmm. years older than me, all that wisdom, it's going to help me make some leaps and bounds, but I'm not just going to become an overnight success. Like overnight successes take 10 to 20 years, like right. every single night, every single night they're built, but it's like, you don't just go to sleep one day and wake up and become a millionaire. And um, to quote Jim Rohn, something that he said, I've been listening to him um, regularly, is that if you get a million dollars, you best become a millionaire or else you get so that you get to keep the money. And what I've come to understand, it, it's been said over and over, but sometimes it just clicks differently when you hear something different is mm -hmm. that. Um, you have to become what you envision for yourself before you you get there. Like if you right. want to become a millionaire, you have to be you have to have a millionaire's mindset. You have to have a millionaire here, right? Right. Because it's like so many stories we've heard about people winning the lottery, and it's like very soon that money's gone for a number of reasons. But it's like the same story every single year. And then every single year, the same people are playing the lottery, hoping to hit it big. So mm -hmm. I was talking with a coworker of mine recently because I, this year I, I started working at um, Home Depot in their mer merchandising department. And when I finally applied for the job and took it to just do something because I was doing nothing for a period of like six months after getting off the job with the shutdown and everything like that, Mm -hmm. Some people were like, oh, that's beneath you or, oh, you're making how much? And it's like, I didn't go into it with those intentions. And it's probably been one of the best jobs I've had since college, since the first job that I had out of college, because it's like, it highlights the things that um, I appreciate about working and the people that you work with, like people that are real. They're not trying to tiptoe around this or tiptoe around that. They're being authentically them whether they're frustrated happy all of that comes out and it's nice to be around that versus being around people that are pretending or just acting like they know something that they clearly don't know and that that's just one one of the blessings to name the several that's come out of there and just yesterday i got a prompt in my email saying hey there's a job offer for a, like a superintendent position in Oak Ridge, which is not too far from where I'm at in uh, Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And I was like, okay, I'm definitely applying for that. 
and I'm going to connect with um, Regina to help me out in that area. Just be like, hey, let's, if you got a minute, let's go over the uh, the basics and see see what we can do. Reply back to this in time and um, just follow through. And all that came in a matter of give or take four months when I finally decided in my mind, this is what you're going to do. Here's how we're going to do it. Start putting out one episode of the podcast, get back to work mentally, get back to work physically, get back into and, it. And stay and make sure you stay right there. Don't right. Uh, the, the other, the other part of it that you have to do is once you get in that mindset, <clears throat> one of the critical things that is often lost is that uh, you have to have a commitment to what it is you're doing that that will sustain you even when what you're trying to do doesn't produce any results that you can see on on at the, at the moment, right? Right. Um, so I think I think you know I I wanted to affirm and confirm to let you know that let me just say this. <laughs> If you would have called me about the podcast, um, there are two responses I would have had. They both would have ended with, up with the same thing, but not the same energy. Mm. So if you would have called me and told me, hey man, are you ready to do the podcast? Um, and you had not been consistent with what you were doing, I would have been on the podcast, but it would have been a different type of energy because you know, I would have looked at it like, oh, okay, well, Ash is starting this back up. Let me go in there and you know, and and, and support my brother, you know, because mm -hmm. I love him. Right. Versus me getting a call saying, oh, okay, yeah, all right, Ash uh, coming back around to me. You know, he's been getting it in. So now I, there's an energy that's that you have ex if they have exuded into me because of your faithfulness. And I think that's what people me mess up uh, with is that they don't understand the importance of energy. Right. It, it comes with different names. You can say, you know, spiritual or spirit or whatever, but the energy you bring to a situation, I'm, I, I'm one of the, if you read the book, I talk about um, how the English language does not do a good job of, um, um, what's the word? does not do a good job of, of, um, of articulating the nuances with words. So they use mm -hmm. love for a variety of different reasons. The same love I got for my daughter, they use the word love. Same love I got for my wife, they use the word love, but these are two different loves, right? Right. Love I got for my mother is different. They use different words. Mm -hmm. The Greek language uses different words for each of these. And so the Greeks have learned how to bring the nuances of a particular feeling into the lexicon. So I'm saying all that to say that when I talk about, you know, energy and spirit, there's a word called uh, charismatos, which is the same word uh, that, um, you know, the, the, the root of that word is the same word as the root for the word charisma, uh, mm -hmm. charisma, right? Right. So, Char charismatos is is translated in the Bible as gift, mm. right? right? So so when it says stir up the gift that is in you, it's really saying get energized, right? Get right. get. What I'm saying is when you're functioning in the podcast, you are bringing an energy into the world, mm -hmm. right? Right. And it's, it's, it's very interesting because, you know, when you talk, you, you kind of talk in a monotone way, but your effort level, your relational uh, dynamic is, is very charismatic, right? You're a charismatic person. Thank you. You know what I mean? And so to that, the, the point that I'm making is, is that's what we need to focus on. That's what people need to understand. You know, it's the kind me and my wife, you know, we've been married 30 years and I told her, you know, I couldn't put my finger on what we need to work on. I said, but you know, sometimes you come down with with the wrong energy, but you but you say the right words. See, that's mm. that's incongruent. Mm. When you say the right things, but the energy behind what you say is not consistent, congruent with it, it 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 feels disingenuous and dishonest. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like right. somebody comes to you and you say, "Hey, how you been?" And they say, "I'm fine." You just said you was fine. 
Right. But the way you said it, right? Yeah. That's yeah. you're not. So so it does two things. One, it starts to chip away at my trust in what you say, right? Because you know, when you are willing to say something but feel another thing that lets me know that you are willing to utter out your mouth things that aren't really truthful. Mm. Right. So, so to your, to, to my point with you is, is that, you know, you, you, you're being faithful, you're bringing, you're bringing Curry Smatos to, to the situation mm -hmm. and, and I appreciate it. And, you know, listen, I was making sure I was going to be, you know, when I, when I saw you hit me up, I was like, Oh yeah, I knew we were supposed to talk today. I wasn't sure the time. And then you hit me up and, and uh, so, you know, I was going to make sure I was going to bring some energy to it, right? I always appreciate it. Because whenever I, I text you, I was like, I better, let me do this. I, I just have to remind myself, I was like, let me make sure I either message him or message the future guest a day before or an hour before, because it's like, just because. Or both. I, right, or both. Or it's like, just because I send the calendar invite or even in sending it, sometimes it's like, hey, did you get it? And it's like, no, it didn't go through. Like, I shouldn't assume that the technology is going to do what I'm supposed to do. And right. And that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying about you. I want you to hear what I'm about to say to you. I okay. want you to write this down. Because right. people may try to give you uh, a hard time about, you know, that you don't sound charismatic. Hmm. But where your charisma comes out is in action. Hmm. I received that. That's that's what I want you to realize. Like, like, don't let, you know, God made you, but, but, but you have some people, they got charisma in their voice, but, but, but they monotone in their actions. <laughs> they don't do nothing, but they say there's no energy to it. Right. It's nothing. So if I have a choice between the two, I want charisma in action. Right. I received that. Man, when it, when you just said that monotone in your actions, it's like that one that one kind of hit differently. Yeah, because it's like I because I I felt it where it's like okay if I already know that um I have a tendency to be monotone in speaking, mm -hmm. and then now I'm being monotone in my actions. I'm like, oh, that's as a double negative. I, I don't think I can win with that. And when I when I know I'm doing do that. that you don't well, never do it. You're one of the people that I'm in relationship with where I trust you. When you say you're going to do something, you do it. You right. Do it. Right. But, but I'm saying like case in point last year, when it seemed like the podcast took a break, that was me being monotone in my actions. And point. it's like, good, good and point. I didn't show up. So it's like people wouldn't see me all together. And it's like part of the reason for me not showing up was where I was thinking, okay, maybe I'm not able to do this to the quality in which mm -hmm. I was doing it before. But like you said, you have to be, or I think um, David Shan said this when I, and he was saying, we have to be married to the actions and dating the results. Like regardless of what it feels like, regardless of what you think it's gonna look like. I was even here trying to mess around, get a new webcam plugged in and see if it's gonna give me better, better video quality. But I noticed it before when we were getting set up and last week when I did two podcasts back to back, it just technical issues and it wasn't working. So I was like, Hey, stop trying to be fancy. Go back to what's working. Like the computer right. webcam works perfectly fine. No headaches, no hiccups. Use that. Be mm -hmm. consistent with it. Remember the goals with which you set out to do the podcast. And it's like, just keep it super simple. You're talking with, everyday people you're highlighting them we're highlighting the conversation and like i just got just getting back into the little things and even direct messaging friends on instagram because that's mm -hmm. the one platform i'm using up i'll share it to the other ones just so that i can reach more people but i'm like no this is my sole focus and through like the stories at least it can it lets you know if somebody's viewed it or clicked on it and I, I messaged or reached out to somebody that I probably hadn't seen since 2014. And it's crazy to think that's almost, it'll be 10 years here in a little bit. I was thinking in two years, I'll be going to uh, my 10 year college graduation. And it's like, mm -hmm. time just flies by. But um, I asked him, he was like, oh yeah, I checked out this, this episode from the throwback 
Thursday that I put out with mm-hmm. my buddy Ben. And he's like, I was like, oh, cool. What would you like about it? He's like, it's random people, but I, I like the I like the conversation. That I, I liked his life story, and I was like, awesome, because that's that's the whole point. Like, mm-hmm. if you saw it, if you liked it, if it resonated with you, regardless if I saw a view or a comment or this or that, I was like, it reached the person it was supposed to reach. That's it. I am in 1000% agreement. (laughs) It's funny. I I was sitting here looking and I was like, man, I kind of feel bad because whenever um, I've seen people talk about books, usually the person doing the questions like has read the book and I'm sitting there like, why do I, it's like, do I have the book? Where is it? And I was like, I don't think I have the physical copy of it. And I think, but then I remembered I, I have books on, um, Kindle on Kindle. So that's where I got the book. And I was just thinking back to myself, I was like, maybe I should ask you if if I ordered it online, because I know for a time in 2019, and I think 2020, like a couple of packages and things I ordered, they just never showed up. Like, I think I maybe ordered a shirt like this from my buddy, um, Vic, who has the clothing brand Boshock. And it just I was like, I don't know if if the uh, male person or somebody just like didn't no, make it. No, no, no. What's happening is that they have the 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 amount of packages that are being delivered has overwhelmed the system. Hmm. The response, uh, you know, a couple of things. One, the uh, these 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 uh, systems. Uh, I mean, UPS has gotten terrible. Uh, I mean, all of them are, are bad. The only one that has any level of reliability is the U.S. Postal Service, to be honest with you. Wow. I've never known them to uh, not do, but UPS and uh, Amazon, terrible. They're getting pretty bad? Yeah. Man. I actually had a UPS uh, package I just had. I bought my wife a recumbent bike. Mm-hmm. Um, uh and um she um is that one of those indoor bikes it's one of those bikes where you sit down she doesn't oh okay okay she doesn't like a spin bike gotcha you you actually sit down for these types of bikes right and um uh the the driver actually put in a message that said uh receiver refused package says he doesn't want anymore. And I never said that. And the only reason the only reason why I caught it is because I have UPS app on my phone and I called oh, them wow. immediately and just told them, listen, I don't want y'all re-delivering. Right. I'll go pick up the package. The UPS uh, is right around the corner from me. I'll just pick it up from them. Right. I don't want y'all, you know, I'll just pick it up from them. I don't want your driver coming out because you guys are trash. <laughs> <laughs> and and forgive me because that's what I said. I actually told him that. <laughs> no, no, you're you're right. I think that's that's back to that being a hundred percent authentic because I think too many times like people try to be nice and cordial, and it's like there's good reason for that because if you're not nice, you could be overly mean. But sometimes you just got to tell somebody like, "Hey, you messing up." Yeah, big time. So. So yeah, we, I, I went and got the bike myself. It was all good. And uh, yeah, I, I just think stuff that, man, they just, they just, they, they haven't done a good job and the customer service, they don't have the customer service skills. And what I mean by that is I, mm-hmm. I always teach people when I'm dealing with them, whether I'm dealing with them uh, uh, at a restaurant or anything, I said, I said, customer service uh, really show you, true, good customer service is when you can take a mistake and turn it into, uh, uh, you know, you know, a a, a, a a positive. Yeah, that's that's what you know. Good customer service does. You know, it's everybody makes mistakes. That's what human beings do. Right. But it's how you respond to your mistakes is that's really probably the most important thing. Hmm. Well, that that's good. But I found the book on Kindle, and I'm going to read it. And we're going to have another follow up because please, I'm, then please. I'm going to be like, okay. 
this let's is talk about this mind. book yeah right, yeah let's right. talk about this book i right. hey listen and when you do i, I want i might i might even bring the wifey in because okay she, <laughs> she loves the book that's yeah, that's so. amazing i i mean like if if nothing else i feel like that that alone blows my mind because it's um from hearing you talk about it to where it's like you yourself you wrote the book so it's a personal project that you're proud of but right. now to have somebody that you not only love but someone that you're married to you've been married to for a time and that they read the book and they're like okay i love this i love something that you created i think that's mm -hmm. that's got to like can you describe what what that's done for you or the feeling of that? Uh, I mean, well, to me, um, it's solidified and given a strong foundation of what I believe I should be doing with the book. Because to me, if you write something, if you're trying to, if you're trying to help people, but you're not helping the people that are, you know, I, uh, I, I go back to Warren Buffett. When they asked Warren Buffett, he was he at this point he had thirty five billion dollars. He was probably the third richest man in the world. They say they asked him to define success. And, and you would think he would say, oh, if I, if I achieve all my goals, blah, blah, blah. Not what he said. He said the success to him is when the people that you want to love you really love you. Hmm. That hit hard. Yeah. And the reason why it hit hard is because a lot of people are loved by people, but may not be loved by the people that they want to love them. Right. So he feels like if you got the people that you want to love you, love you, then you're doing some things. So. Yeah. Yeah, so the I, fact I that my wife, that. yeah, the fact, the fact that my wife is so on fire by the book just just gives me a level of um, affirmation that can't be given by words. Hmm. You know what I mean? So, right. That's big. So are, I, are you... She loves the book. <laughs> so I mean, how long have you guys been doing the um, the meetup courses? classes well yeah they're actually courses that come through our bible institute i i have yet to actually move it i i i take a a, a iterative approach you try to 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 affect uh, and influence the people that are close to you mm -hmm. and then you just uh incrementally move that circle out right. so uh you know I, I the book was available to people i knew and that i would interact with and they would see the book then I would move, I moved out to, to my faith community, my church. Mm -hmm. And so the next step for me is to kind of, you know, move it out to uh, uh, other churches, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So right. we could be able to do uh, uh, classes with them, Zoom gotcha. meetings with them. But I mean, you, you guys have been doing, I mean, you're doing it now. For through about Zoom. a year. So we've been about doing it about, yeah, about a year. Okay. Yeah, I think it might be, it might be over a year because I think yeah. we, you know, I was gonna say, you, I was no, gonna it, say it, you started like 2019, didn't you? Yeah, I started like 2019. So it was, it was, it was, it was. Yeah, we had done a couple of classes in 2019. So it's about two years. Gotcha. Nice. <laughs> and most of 2019 and most of 2020. Uh, gotcha. So when when everything kind of shut down, you guys had to move it to virtual. Yep. And that that shouldn't have been too out of a transition for you because you having an IT background and everything. Right. I already had a Zoom account and I already had a paid Zoom account. So nice. I could do everything I need to do. Awesome. I, um, it's funny you mentioned that because I remember trying to do the first recording or two of the podcast and I was like, oh, I, I got this uh, message reminder. And I was like, oh, <laughs> there's a time limit on it unless you pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Immediately, I was like, you know, I believe in this thing, so I'm gonna go ahead and pay. And like, you have the option to do it monthly or yearly. And I was like, okay, well, I'm able to pay for a year in advance and get the discount just to come. Free with your mind, it. just free right. your mind and, and just go. And right. Focus. So when I when I when it came time for me to start back up, I was like, oh, okay, I already paid for the year, so just utilize the tools I already have. I don't think I, I need to use the uh, the calendar app, mm -hmm. at least at this time where before I would I could like post the time and let people use it. But I was like, no, right now I'm just going to reach out to people individually like I was doing, figure out the times because now I'm working the night shift. So it's just um, Saturday is really 
the best day or the only day that I can have to record. Otherwise, it's trying to sleep during the day and then get up, run an errand, do a recording for an hour or two. And I was like this, especially at the start, I've been two months into the job now and it just, it, I was doing way too much. And I was like, nope, I know what I'm doing wrong. I'm getting back to where I'm trying to pick up one more thing than I should be. And just back again to, to Dave's um, morning meetup group, reading the one thing, it's like, what's the one thing I need to be doing to make my days successful? And it was like, I need to rest. Like the work isn't hard to do. Like I don't have an aversion to action. I'm going to do it regardless. I need to be resting more to sleep at least minimum five hours. Mm -hmm. And then I can do the rest with my time. And then the other thing, again, um, just back to the books that we read and the influences that were around from the richest, not the richest man in Babylon, the greatest salesman. It talks about going to work and keeping work at work and home at home like just keeping those separate to where um, it's just less to think about, less to flood can you, your can mind. Can you type those two books you put in there? That, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'll text them to you. The, the Richest Man in Babylon and the, uh, yeah. Text right. them I guess actually that's three because The Richest Man in Babylon, I thought about it because that's the first book they started reading this year. They're doing like a book club reading every week or every day and then having like 15 minutes to discuss at the beginning of the call but that's a good one the greatest salesman in the world that's by Ogmandino but um I'll send you this and that one's talking about um it's a really neat story of how no I, I won't tell you <laughs> I'll let you discover it yeah, let me discover it it's yeah simple. I'll let you discover do, do, do it do me a favor Yep. Let's between us, because I wanted to get back to it, just you know, us reconnecting. Mm -hmm. Let's let's start the um, um I think this is you know, this just came to me as we were talking, and I just feel like you're somebody I could definitely do that. Yeah. But as we get books that are and, and meaningful to us, let's mm -hmm. just text each other the books. Okay. That works. Make sure, but just between me and you is right, a book right. thing, right? Yeah. And the reason why I say that is one of the things I believe one thousand percent is mm -hmm. true. Is this thing that they say that most millionaire billionaires whomever read on average 50 books a, a year mm, that and makes most sense people, most people in poverty read one book a year maybe right so it's funny because at least i know this is the book i'm reading every day mm -hmm. dennis kimbrough oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, dennis kimbrough definitely yeah. He's, I know he's the person that describes to that too. Right. And it's, it's funny because uh, a friend gave me this book recently uh, by Russell Brunson. Oh yeah. 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 The, uh, uh, Russell Brunson is actually the creator of click funnels. Yep. Yep. And yeah. I, so send me all, all of that. Yeah. You just told me. <laughs> I need you to send all of that to me. Okay. I'm sending it to you. It's funny because as I've been, kind of decluttering my mind. I'm like, okay, um, I'm decluttering my room and the stuff because I moved back home um, like June, I think, yeah, June of 2019 because um, just overwhelmed with stress and work. So I saw myself out of the, the engineering job, moved back home. And it was really one of those things where almost like a crisis mode and when we moved, like my mom came up to help me pack and we just packed everything away, just put things in the boxes where they could fit. So I think now in 2021, months before June, um, I'm unpacking a lot of those boxes and just being like, oh, OK, this is where I put this. And like, <laughs> it's funny how uh, I'm look unknowingly and knowingly I look out for my future self where it's like I'll organize things and I'll classify and I'll be like, Hey, Asher, like I don't leave myself the notes, but essentially it's like the way in which I lay things out. I'm like, this needs to be right here. You'll find this later and it'll be helpful. Like Absolutely. Uh, I was telling my younger brother today, I found he's wrapping up here. It is. He's wrapping up his uh, college semester. So I pulled this book as I was digging through stuff where I think I got it my senior or my junior year. 
and it was like how how are you going to guarantee yourself a 4.0 and the main thing that he mentioned was that his organization was off because he thought it was good and i was like okay well you have everything written down in your calendar that's on your phone because like you put it in your phone that goes everywhere with you that's in your computer everywhere you go it's there it's a reminder to you it's like no i just got it with siri i was like well does siri have it organized to where you can physically see it mm -hmm. and then he's like no nope. so i was like i just went into this thing and it's real thin but i was like well this is what worked for me and initially i didn't think i used the whole thing but i used enough of it to make a difference and we just shared that for like five, 15 minutes this morning. And I was like, Hey, just take the time today and tomorrow mm -hmm. list out your class schedule at the very, at the bare minimum. And then from there, we'll go into more details. Like you'll go into the test dates, you'll go into that so that you don't miss it. And then we'll recap. And I was like, we got to recap, but now again, back to even like the podcasting thing even though he needs the help, I need to be checking in with him as like a mentor to be like, Hey, where is this specific thing? <laughs> because when it's like, it, sometimes I'll ask too many questions and it's like, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, like back up, back up. And I was like, okay, I'll back up and I'll just ask you softball questions. But now it's like, you're in crisis mode and you're asking for help. And it's like, you never, you never, and I was like, I was like, I've got receipts you don't want to tell me I never did anything. Like if I, if I'm pretty sure I did something, I've got it written down. I've got it dated. I've got it bullet point out. So I, I showed him some, some of the things and I was like, the last time we talked was maybe February. And I was like, went through one of my notebooks. I was like, yep. February 2nd. Oh, I think you muted yourself. Sorry, buddy. No, you're My good. Wife, the wife came down. I was asking her. Hey, Mrs. Pete. Hey, how you doing? Doing great. Good, good. Trying to get me some coffee, even though I've been up. <laughs> so, so tell Asher, because I'll, I'll get the, the rain. Tell Asher, because uh, he asked me, give him your feedback about the book. Okay. The book is phenomenal. She's she not going to get on the camera because she. No, knows. that's fine. That's fine. Okay, let me see if I don't look too bad. I might get on the camera because I, I got to talk about my husband's book. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear you loud and clear. Oh, okay. So yeah, I'm looking at the camera so I can get the camera. The book, the book will have you walking in your destiny and your purpose because what it does, it allows you to tap into why why God created you and what you've been called to do and to actually help you understand that you were, no one can do what you do that is God that put that in you and you need to be able to present that to the world. And in order to do that, you have to go on a journey of discovering yourself and dealing with the the um, truths, the unpleasant truths about yourself, the perverted side of yourself, being true to who you are, knowing that we all have flaws, but then that your what your diversity that you go through does not define you. That you gotta allow your adversity to um, and use that as a use that as a uh, as a growth mechanism for you. That you've gone through it. That there's a lesson to learn from it. And that when you go through adversity, when you have all these challenges, that God is shaping and molding you into what he wants you to be. And I like to, for me, to use the, 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 the thing of a diamond. The diamond doesn't start out as a diamond. It starts out as a piece of black coal. And the only way that the diamond can become, the, 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 it can become a diamond, it has to have heat and pressure put, put on it. And so the heat and pressure of a life, as you go through that journey, you will have that put on you, which would in turn allow you to become this diamond that God designed for you to be. 
Mm-hmm. I, what, yeah, I love good. Most, what I love the most about what you just said, which is what we got to write down is, you said that adversity is a growth mechanism. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I'm going to throw my shoe at you. <laughs> that right there. I mean, that was a major statement. Right. It is that is something God allows in your life as a mechanism for your growth, mm-hmm. right? If, if you can catch a hold of that, you are in a good place. Because then now when things happen, you don't look at them as happening to you, right? but you look at, it, at, at them as happening for you, mm-hmm. right? I was, I right. was listening to, uh, I was listening to T.D. Jakes has his new book out about don't drop the mic. And, and oh God, God does that with me. He always gives me stuff to add to the stuff that is in line with your book. So he was talking and he was like, greatness is never on sale. Greatness costs. He said, when you want a Rolls Royce, they ain't selling them for two for one. He might he might have robbed that from me. <laughs> I, 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 no, 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 it's all good. It's all good. I ain't mad at it, I'm just telling you, that's one of Eric Thomas' oh, signatures, well, yeah. Well, and he was saying, that you have to, he said, anything that you want out of life, you have to put the work in. What's wrong with society is they don't want to put the work in. They don't want to go through the trials and the tribulations of getting where you need to get. He said, if anybody been in a marriage for 50 years and say they've been happy, they lying. That ain't the truth. The truth ain't in you. No one goes through a marriage for 50 years and everybody happy. And we can attest to that. Whoa, whoa. Let's let, let, let's think about the wording there. So it might I, be happy right now. Yeah, <laughs> nobody goes through 50 years or 30 years of marriage and always happy. Yeah, that's right. What, right. Yeah, that's what he said. Always happy. Yeah. And, so, and so, like I said, with with the with the di- that, that that thing resonates with me about, because I talk on the, I research about a diamond and what it does and 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 that's how that's that's what that's why I love Pete book because every time I we teach this class, I get something different in it from the people that's in it. So we have to deal with all our idiosyncrasies, the fear, the um, um, you know, uh, unpleasant truths about ourselves. We have to do with um, deal with uh, childhood issues. You got all this stuff, but if you can get past that. And just be on this journey to to understand that God, no one can do what God created you to do. And when you don't tap into that and live in a false reality, you can't reach the people that God has called you to reach because there is a a, a, a plethora. Is that a word? Yeah. Uh, uh, um, there's a a whole bunch of folks. No, that, you had a good word. She. She uh, 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 um, a whole bunch of folks that God wants you to touch. Plethora of work. Yeah. You, you, oh, okay. Yeah, you so yeah. Do it. So that's why that discovery, and you got to be able when you when you read people book, you got to be able to want to go on the journey. It ain't a book that you read and then you get this great big revelation because it's gonna be some things in there that you never thought about yourself that you have to deal with. Like one of the ladies in the class, it was so funny. Two ladies said, when P said to pervert you, she was like, how did she say I was a <laughs> perverted you? What do you mean to pervert you? And she said she went and looked up the word perverted and she was like, oh, I am. <laughs> and so she looked at it, she was like, and all of us have a perverted side to us when we're not dealing in the true. Yep. The, the true person of you. And like I said, it's a journey. So it's it's a book that you can read, but it's a book that you're going to have to keep going back to. Mm. Keep going back to because until we, we never become, there's a spectrum that he talked about. When you're true on a scale from one to 10, how true are you to yourself? And you have to look true to being the true you. And you never will attain a 10 
until you are always striving. Yeah. When you start to do the, the, the Bible, the Bible says uh, 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 the, it you, says, but now we see dimly, but then we'll see him just as he is. Right. You won't really be able to see the tin in you, you until you're right in front of God, right? right. right. So the, the minute that you think you are tin, that's the minute that, that you're not dealing with truth. Mm. Because you are, and you constantly evolve. Right. And so it's a journey. And, the, the, and discovering that your gift is, it's okay if you don't know your gift. Mm. It's, it's not about running to the finish line. It's right. about being on this quest to find that find out what God purposed you to do. And no one can do what you do. Yeah. God created, you have to understand that you the gift. Right. A lot of people don't understand that they are the gift. Right. You and get that revelation that you the gift, mm -hmm. everything gonna be all right. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> it's funny when when she just said it and I I was I was able to read um the um the message behind you because you were co you're covering part of it but yeah. when she said no oh. you are a gift and unleash the hero within because it's like whenever I, I i'd hear you say it i always hear um i always hear people reference to the gift as like something you have like the talent story and it's mm -hmm. like okay you've got this thing in you and you've got to figure out what it is you got to you figure out how to use it, where to use it, that type of thing. But knowing that you yourself are the gift, mm -hmm. like that, that kind of opened my mind in a different way and kind of helped me. I was like, huh? Hmm. Okay. There, there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack there. And, and like your wife was just saying, it's a journey. It's not a, just, you just hit the lottery. You just, boom, I got it. That's it. I'm set for life. And that's kind of something I thought last year. It's like, okay. And even back to 2019, it's like, you grow up, you go through your teenage years, you go to college, you graduate, you get a good job, you pay off your debts. It feels like, hey, I made it. Like, <laughs> that's what everybody talked about. That's the thing. Oh, you got to make six figures. Oh, okay. Like, you work, work, work your butt off and like, oh, wow, that's six figures. Okay, cool. Like, oh, look, um, save six figures. And then you, you do it. But like, if that's all you see and, and you don't see a personal, like Miles Monroe, I think was saying, it's like, you got to have, you got to find your work. And a work isn't the same as a job because you can get fired from a job or you can leave a job or do whatever with the job but your work is something that you have to have as like your life mission and i think that goes along with what you're saying you are the gift mm -hmm. and you have to go within to unleash it and yeah. that 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 was powerful like you said i i hear the passion in in her speaking on the book right. and, as, and as she was talking about it i was like oh my bad go ahead no no go ahead you go ahead i'm gonna I'm come i was back. gonna say it's funny we're sitting here talking about books and I just had to go and grab these. I was like, does yours have a workbook with it? It does, but we need a workbook like that. Right. Because right. I, we've kind of done a uh, we've kind of done a uh uh um a kind of a jerry rigged yeah. workbook, but not not yeah, really yeah. like so uh I'm gonna I'm gonna let you see. You don't have to get in front of the camera, baby. Can you pull up the stuff you were showing? Oh, yeah, yeah. So this one, this book, I think I heard about this through one of the Breathe, Breathe You groups on uh, the Chameleon Call, which is like the S-type mm -hmm. personalities when we talk yeah. about the disc. And it talks about setting boundaries. So Boundaries is the book. It was written by, I think, two doctors, Dr. Cloud and Townsend. And then they made a workbook to go with it. Oh, because yeah. as you're reading it. We need to order both those so we can both read it. Yeah, and also see the formatting mm -hmm. for the workbook. And, and could, I was going to tell him something else too that was because it it has that for the individual. It has it for marriage and um, a couple other things. But I think it makes yeah. sense. And oh, you're oh, so so they have boundary workbooks. Yeah, different ones for different yep. things. Yep. Oh yeah, so it's, it's yeah. going to be a game changer for you guys because you've already put a year into classes 
in person right. and virtual and you know what works what doesn't work the different things like that and once you see the format you'll just be like oh, okay it's a perfect match and what better way to be able to share it whether it's like click funnels or anything like that mm -hmm. to share it with people because it's like you not only have like the physical book you have testimonials you have um sessions and things like that if you decided to record anything or even if you haven't you still can mm -hmm. because you still have the people that you meet and it's mm -hmm. not back to what we said at the beginning it's not about just like um sowing the seeds and watching them grow it's like no you you sow the seeds and then you've got to be vigilant about keeping the bad things away keeping the weeds out of your garden and things like that yeah but yeah yeah back, yeah. back yeah, to jim yeah back you have to, to tend the garden right, right right but you can't sit there and just stare and be like okay grow grow now grow grow yeah and another thing that i wanted to share with you because you were saying that you know you were taught to make you know we have this uh you know the mindset of you know what was told to us what we need to do mm -hmm. you, you're a little far away can you can you get a little closer yeah so we were taught to um you said you got the six figures you you've done all that you got mm -hmm. the education but there's still something missing right um, and in pete book he talks about that there's a um a section in his book that he talked about that it was a study done. All these folks that went to all these fabulous uh, a TED talk, yeah, a TED talk mm -hmm. did, you know, did extremely well. Were very powerful people, but because they weren't in their purpose, they still something was missing. They mm -hmm. didn't know what it was. They were very successful according to the world financially standards. successful. Financially, you Everything. know, graduated from Princeton, Harvard, Yale, all that. When, yeah. when, 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 when people external to them look at their lives, they say, oh, you're successful. You have the money, you have prestige, you mm -hmm. have a claim, mm -hmm. but they did not have fulfillment. Yes. And so, I mean, I use, I use, uh, I, I love using Steve Jobs. I was like, this dude changed the world. But at the end of the day, he realized that all the money he had, everything he did, it didn't, he took, for me reading his story, he dropped a lot of dead bodies along the way to become who he is. Hmm. And at the end of the day, he realized that he did something wrong that at the end of his life, he just was not, where he needed to be and it was sad when i read his story how this man changed the world we're talking about him and he's been dead for a long time they'll talk about him forever mm -hmm. but he realized that there was still something missing that he missed and the and the and 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 the and the, and the, and the, 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 the people that he affected and what he said to them and did to them along the way to get to that path. Mm -hmm. That thing blows my it, mind. It, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting dialogue and great for discussion uh, because about what my wife just said, because there's no question that Steve Jobs had, a, had an impact on the world. But, but what we need to ask ourselves is, is, does impact require fulfillment? Are they, are they tied mm -hmm. together, right? That's a good question. Um, uh, because he clearly was, he clearly had impact, uh, but 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 he did. Uh, but, but I'm still not sure if he fulfilled. You know, no, I mean, I'm listening. I mean, because I mean, the reality is like the example in the in that I use. Hit Hitler <clears throat> changed the world, but he definitely didn't fulfill his purpose. Yeah, and then you look at somebody like Chadwick. Chadwick fulfilled his purpose. The guy, the actor that died, mm -hmm. he fulfilled his purpose. Period. Even when he was dying, he fulfilled his pur pur his purpose. Mm -hmm. And I listened to how his family talked about him and how he was able to keep the character of who he was 
being in Hollywood, he wouldn't take nothing that would diminish what his purpose was that would put him or his people in a negative light. I'm not taking that role. That role, why you always got to have us as a drug dealer or doing this or that? And he, lo he lost work because of because it. Because that, but guess what? At the end of the day, that man was only on this earth 43 years and he fulfilled his purpose with passion. Hey man, you might have to uh, do a, a podcast with my wife. <laughs> I will. I will. Uh, it's funny and because she's coming out. She's coming out with a uh, 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 a devotional. Okay. It's funny because we were talking about getting her on the podcast earlier, and it's 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 just it's always amazing how things just kind of work out because it's, I work it's, out. It's, it's like when you don't when you don't try to control it. You just let exactly. God do the thing. Exactly. You know? It's um, <laughs> man, I, I had to write that one down earlier where you said, does impact require fulfillment? Is that how you said it? Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, not, it's not a statement as much as it's a question for its discussion, right? Right, right. Like, like, like that's something people need to talk about. Yeah. I mean, and, because, you know, um, you know, I often wonder with my wife, uh, not my wife, my mom, uh, if she, because, okay, so fulfilling your purpose and having impact, you, you, if, you, if, you, if you feel, you, you can, you know, so, so, so if you impact, if you, if you want to have divine impact, I think you need to fulfill that's your the, purpose. That's the word right there. Right. Divine yeah. impact, because... Chadwick had divine impact. Right. Because had. Hitler had impact, but right. not divine. But it wasn't divine. Right. So, and it goes and back he, he could have fulfilled his purpose if that's the goal that he set out to to, mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I do a lot of study on, on Hitler. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's interesting. Uh, he just kind of, he fell into perversion as he lived his life, mm -hmm. like it became, it evolved into like anti-Semitism wasn't yeah. necessarily at the forefront. Well, listen to this was not at the forefront of really what he was trying to do initially, but it was mm -hmm. what he had been brought up under. He was, he was ripe for that kind of evil because of right. how he was uh, 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 raised up by other people that he looked up to. Mm, God just gave me one. Okay, so I'll like, give an example. Um, with Queen Elizabeth, uh, she had her son Charles marry Princess Diana based on he. She forced her son to marry that young eighteen-year-old girl, knowing that he was in love with another woman. Mm. And because of the lineage, the lineage and their, their inheritance, you went and really, Princess Diana impacted the world. Y'all didn't know that she was gonna impact the world the way she did, but you had him marry that woman, knowing that you didn't love her and all the stress that it caused her with her insecurities and 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 you know when they broke up and how he treated her and she always said it was three people in their marriage and at the end of the day because of the family and all the stuff that he was brought up with that was brought into play and when you talk about that um growing up it was saying go to college make this money do this and that and now you're like, what? And so in discovering your gift, you have to let go of all the, the stuff that's maybe not so positive until you finding out who you are and walking into right. what you're called mm -hmm. to walk mm -hmm. into. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. And, and I guess even for anyone listening, I, I, I would say, I didn't say the things because I, I feel like sometimes when people talk down on their past experience, it's like you're downplaying what, happen for you and it's like by no means do i want to downplay going to college getting a job saving up right. money making exactly. money because all those things were great and i'm actually i'm very grateful for that because i know 
going to college, like I transferred into a bigger school. And a lot of times I don't say the school just because I don't want like the, the clout that comes with it per se, but I, I don't downplay, I understand the, the standard that it holds, but I remember the first school I went to and I always be grateful for it. And I, I'd say I would do it the exact same way because first college class, English class that I took um, with Dr. Abhimavar, and I'm going to reach out to him and try to get him on the podcast, was that he taught us English from scratch in the way that it should be taught, at least at a college level or just on a basic level where he taught us writing properly as well as how to have discussion. And one thing that he said that always sticks with me till now is that when you're having a discussion, the point isn't to win. Like, like you said with the statement, does impact or does divine impact require fulfillment? It's not, no, what here's I, the right I, answer. No, what I was saying is does impact uh, right. require fulfillment? Uh, right, right. Yeah, I'm saying divine impact does. Right, okay. Right, right, yeah. Got gotcha. you, right. Thank you for correcting me not to mince your words, but asking a question like, does impact require fulfillment? It's a great question for discussion because then it's like everybody's got a different opinion on it, or at least right, right. It, might, it might bring all kinds of things. And having that discussion isn't to say, okay, here's the thing, but just from us talking about it briefly, you made another statement where it's divine impact does well no it, fulfill fulfillment of your purpose um uh, uh divine impact requires fulfillment of your purpose in other words mm -hmm. you can't have divine impact unless you're fulfilling the purpose right for which the divine, the divine created you to be like right. your existence your existence um uh is is you exist to fulfill, to, to you exist to create divine, uh, Im, divine impact, right? God, God creates you. God created Asher to have a specific type of impact mm -hmm. in the world, right? right. Like, right. so let me give you an example of how God just. So I, I'm getting into painting, mm -hmm. and one of the core things that you have to learn how to do is how to mix paint. Hmm. Uh, now I'm gonna bless you with this one. Uh, so, so why is why is um, why is um, mixing paint and the skill of mixing paint important? Because, okay, because um, your ability to mix paint and get the right color and hue will directly impact your ability to be able to, 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 to paint the picture with the most vivid representation of what you want. In other right. words, if I use that from a divine analogy, uh, each of us is a mixture of the paints that God wants to put on the palette of, 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 of life in the world. Mm -hmm. And you have to reflect the color that, that the painter intended, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Right? Because if you don't, when you get put in there, when you get put on a canvas, you distort the picture. Mm, right. That's what a distorted person does. A perverted person distorts the whole tapestry and fabric of humanity. How do and, we know this to be the case? Because right. Hitler is a perversion of what God intended, and he literally distorted the world. Mm. That That's what I was going to ask you. I was going to say, can you... When you say perversion or perverted, can you describe that or d define yeah. that? Yeah. So, okay. So, um, um, if we look at what the literal words, uh, 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 I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what we do in class with this right. one. Uh, talk about uh, uh, because because we had we had some people that really were struggling with the word perversion. Right. Because right. so I guess by default, it's like whenever I hear perversion or whenever I think perversion, you think in, I'm thinking of um, uh, 
the creep next door or somebody hiding in the bushes. Right, watching, right, like, right, 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 right. <laughs> seeing yeah, like who's yeah, out but, there. But, but let's use the, let's look at, so this is what the word, the, the word says. The word says, there's two, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the first one though is the alteration of something from its original course, meaning or state to a distortion or corruption of what was first intended, right? Mm -hmm. So perversion is when something is twisted or mm -hmm. taken out of what the intent was for it, right? right? And so when you are perverted, what that looks like is if you were intended to be this and you end up being that, right? Right, right. Like it's 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 a. Um, I, I'm I'm trying to think of the best way to say this, but but per perversion in the sense of what we're talking about in the book is is uh that God had God the, uh, you know we talk about Jeremiah one five mm -hmm. so it says uh, you know before you were form well, uh, before you ever formed in your mother's womb I knew you right. you know I sanctified you I made you to be a prophet to the nations. So in this in this particular scripture, uh, God is talking to Jeremiah. But what what it lets us know is that God intended uh, had an intention for all of us even before we were physically formed. That right. there's an essence of who we are that is pure and divine, right? Right. That part of us that God created before we were ever physically uh, manifested is is a part of the divine aspect of God that's in us. Right. Right. And what what can occur is when that that essence can be can go from the purity of what it was before we were born. Watch, because the Bible says that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. It is the process of being born, the process of going through our physicality and, 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 and this and being temporal in nature that mm -hmm. can corrupt us. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's why if you go through the scripture, it's always talking about the incorruptible, the incorruptible. Yeah. So, so, so the objective is that the purity of what that was in Jeremiah one five is that we fight to maintain the purity of what that is throughout our lives, right? right. And, and and oftentimes, you know, it's it the the plan for 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 that to be restored as much as it can be is is in the person of jesus christ it's in the person of what he did on the on the cross it's in the person of that transformational power that resurrected him um uh, uh from the dead so we believe that the same power that they did can restore us to what we were before right right, right. so but any but outside of that it is inevitable we're going to move along that u spectrum to perversion because that's what the world does. That's right. what people do. People mistreat you. People talk crazy to you. People do. You know, sometimes you get you you get you you know lightning in a bottle, and you 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 know you you have a mom and a dad that nurture you and you love you unconditionally and do all these other things. But most of us, that's not what we have. We're disappointed about somebody. It could be our parents. It could be our siblings. It could be the people we're in relationship with. It could be the people we work with. It, it could be it could just be you know it could be random. People right. are going to do something. Right, and our job is to not allow it to 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 move us away from that that the beauty of that divine aspect of who we were. Mm. Does that make sense? It does. So so that so so my my contribution to trying to help people not be uh, uh, to to move in the direction of the perversion is what I've done with the book to just just to make in the, everyone self aware of the fact that we are on this, this spectrum. Right. And that we have a responsibility to try to be true to ourselves, to be honest with ourselves and to have a relationship with God, right? We do those two things. It yeah. will help ensure that we don't slip into a, a place. Like if you look, I, I did, I'm telling you, I did a study of, of, of Hitler. Mm -hmm. uh, I know human beings, human beings don't naturally follow monsters. Right. And we don't do that. What happens is, is that people, we, we, we get attached to people, not when they are the full grown monster, but when they are, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody, everybody thinks that baby lions are cute. <laughs> <laughs> everybody like, you know, cubs. Right. You know, you know, 
But, uh, you know, I use the story of the woman who, who had a lion cub uh, and the lion, the lion, she raised it from a cub all the way up and for 15 years. The, the lion <laughs> lived with her. And one day the lion jumped on her and ate her. He realized he was a lion. You, know, you get what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah. You know, hey, <laughs> what's the moral of that story? The moral of that story is, you know, you 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 know, people are gonna be true to who they are. You need to be making sure you know who they are before True's you start, true. you know, getting in that that type of closeness in relationship. So yeah. that's why most people, most people, you know, when if you if you study Hitler, yeah, Hitler was deified in Germany. They literally, uh, uh, Joseph Goebbels, listen, listen. Hitler, that's why I tell people, you know, about perversion and how 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 it is. Mm -hmm. Listen, Joseph Goebbels, when Hitler, they was in the bunker with Hitler. Mm -hmm. When Hitler killed himself, Joseph Goebbels' wife killed her children and then killed herself. And her husband killed himself. I don't know what the order was. Yeah. But they, the whole family killed themselves. And, and what she said was is she couldn't live in a world without national so, national socialism, which is a, another word for Nazis, right? Nazism. And so it just lets you know, you know, how people are. You know, let me tell you what the biggest problem I have with, with, with Donald Trump and the direction that conservatism is moving in and mm -hmm. the Republican Party is not whether, you know, we have a difference of, of opinion. It is the belief that they think that the direction they're going can't end up in another Nazi Germany. Right. The fact that you believe it lets me know that you, 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 I don't know what y'all are believing. Right. But it's twisted. Like if you want to see a modern day version of perversion, mm -hmm. it, it, it's now like a lot of people don't believe that Christianity can be perverted. That's a mm. lot. It's, it's been very perverted. It's, it, yeah, exactly. The, uh, it's the perversion of Christianity that was allowed it to be used mm -hmm. uh, for the colonization and brutality in Africa. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Uh, 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 under the pretense of, uh, you know, you're saying under the pretense of you bringing uh, quote unquote savages mm -hmm. into, you know, a civilized Christian Christianized world, which is better for them. Right. They didn't ask for that. I think Africa was fine without Europe. Yeah, I think they were doing pretty good without Europe. It's not like you know they weren't doing well. Yeah. So so don't don't you know just because you think they need to be more uh uh what's the word uh, uh so civilized or no you you I don't know what's the word I want to use European uh oh like made to made to be like Europeans. Yeah yeah, there's a word for it, but I just can't uh. Uh, get it out of my head, but um, yeah, the, it, it just, um, man, sometimes I lose train of thought when I start thinking about Europe Me too. and Africa. I start, <laughs> Me too. I, well, I mean, I, it, I, it, I it, it, keep prevent myself from getting into a dark space, so gotcha. I, I start losing. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to I'm just gonna veer away from that, but gotcha. you know the point that I'm right, trying to make. Right, right. I get what you're saying. It's and it's funny because when your wife had brought up uh, Chadwick Boseman, I know um, when the movie came out, was it the Black uh, Panther Black movie? Panther. Was it 2016 or 20? I feel like it was 2017 mm -hmm. or yeah. 2018. Yeah. But we, when it came out, I know um, we talked briefly and saying that we wanted to to discuss it, and I was like, man, I really want to discuss it, and I feel like. We could even talk about it now just because yeah. like to speak to, as your wife was saying, him fulfilling his purpose or him um, being who he was supposed to be in a divine manner. Right. Him, the work that he did in that, even I think when I think about it, I'm like, he's he played a stronger character in his introduction in Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. And then when it showed up in his movie, he was more like the background character. Everyone else was able to shine a bit more. But it's like from those two movies, I feel like that, hey, that made 
a huge impact when you talk about like the social impact, the economic impact for Disney and company, or you talk about like, I think what, um, I wasn't sure in which way you wanted to discuss it, but I saw so many things in that movie and I've gone and I think I've tried to watch it back at least one or two times and mm -hmm. just seeing like the technological advancement that they talk about, but not only that, but you have the whole background to the story of how the whole conflict came to be. And I think Quest had highlighted it before where it's like a big conflict came out of a lie, which was something done in the dark. It's like a lie that was committed and hidden away. Nobody was told about it. And then lo and behold, it comes back to the forefront and mm. everyone has to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. If you're watching the Marvel Universe, you'll see uh, there's a battleground for the narrative uh, that we have. To, I, I feel like in our cultures, whether mm -hmm. it's people of, uh, who, who are, who, who are, you know, descendants of slaves in America, or people who are, 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 you know, uh, you know, from like yourself, who are from, from Africa. Right. Uh, I don't know if we are fighting in a collective way to ensure that the narrative uh, is, 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 is not conscientiously. I'm not, I mean, we do it in, 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 from an individualized perspective, but I'm not sure mm -hmm. what we're doing collectively to make sure that narrative is corrected. Hmm. What do you right? mean? Like, what do you mean? Okay, so what I mean by that is like the narrative that's 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 out here, like it, it's moving there, things with BLM and all these other things mm -hmm. are happening, but the narrative is is so crazy. Like I was watching a, a story in there, and you know how you know how Europeans uh will 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 act like uh, uh Egypt's history is all um um all european or phoenician yeah my history teacher actually told me that 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 that, that uh that uh, uh the egyptians weren't 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 people of color they were phoenician and and there mm. was a ptolemaic dynasty cleopatra was white so right. she just was because that was a derivative of the ptolemaic dynasty as yeah. a result of the alexandrian uh, uh alexander's conquest of egypt so i i, I get that but yeah. to say that that the that Egypt itself was a a, a, a European a European or Middle Eastern only country yeah. is ridiculous, and this is how you know it because most of us, from a DNA perspective, yeah, uh, uh, have DNA from Ramses the Third. Mm. Most of us, right? Oh wow! Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you. There's a half lo half light. Uh, uh, I have it in mind. Okay. Oh, did so, you do? You did like the, uh, the 23 ancestry me. twenty? Yeah, okay. Twenty three me. So there's a there's a particular. Uh, I'm I'm gonna show it to you. Gotcha. Yeah, if, if you want to share the screen or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna share it. I'm just gonna pull okay. it up real quick. Uh, but it's funny as you got to talking about a little bit of history. I was like, man, you must have been talking to Sunny D recently. I know you guys are always always keeping up. Right here, I'm gonna show it to you. Okay. And then we'll. Oh no, I uh, you disabled a uh, participant oh. sharing. So wait, I did this earlier. I was trying to figure out with my younger okay, brother. Okay, now I can do it. Now I can okay. do it. This was able to do it. Got it. Okay. But I, I was saying earlier, um, it I could hear almost Sunny D in your voice for a second when you were talking about history. Okay, because so you see, Ram, these these are the DNA tested uh, mummies, right? Ramses the Third. Mm -hmm. We're talking about this was like in one thousand BC or something like that, right? Something eleven hundred BC mm -hmm. was when he lived. This haplite group right here, 
this is the 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 uh this this is his this is from him mm -hmm. this is from Ramses the third right right this is his haplite group this is from the DNA that was tested right okay if you look on here this is this this is a Y chromosome haplite group in other words this is a branch of his DNA right okay, okay. that makes sense and, and 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 most of the people in this group are people of sub sub Saharan uh ancestry right. One is D thirty eight, yeah. And so this is in my haplite group. This this is a part of my DNA. So I have oh, okay. I have a, a DNA connection to Ramses the third, gotcha. right? But most West African people do, right? Men, right. Not, not anybody else. Men. Okay. So what that lets us know, right? What that mm -hmm. lets us know is that there is a connection. Between between Ramses the third and most most men of color, right? I'm gonna, so, or, so, and then we also know that if you look at the mummy of Ramses the third's son, mm -hmm. his hair is woolly, mm -hmm. not straight, right? So we know that that we have Egyptian royalty that had hair like us, right? But mm -hmm. the narrative that's being taught. Mm -hmm is that that's not the case right and, and we don't sufficiently research find out and battle and teach our kids otherwise that's the right point. i get when what I'm you're saying. saying right yeah you want me to stop sharing yeah no you i, I think i'm sharing okay well yeah. man did, did did you want me to stop sharing your screen so we could go back to yeah yeah. Stuff? Okay. yeah yeah okay yeah. gotcha we're good, we're good. But I was going to say to your point about the narrative is that you always you never hear Egypt referenced as like, oh, it's just part of Africa, because when people right. talk about Africa, just the sense that they say Africa, it's always like this massive thing, which it is, but it's a continent. You never hear anyone say, well, you hear people say Europe, but they'll speak specifically to the country in which they're talking about. And it's like. I saw something recently that um, Theo, our, our buddy Theo, he mm -hmm. put up, it was sharing an African proverb, but this time it said a Ghanaian proverb because Ghana, I think it's either Ghana or Guinea is a country in Africa. So it's like, I appreciated the fact that they highlighted, okay, this is this proverb, it comes from this region so that when people think about the country, it's not just a wasteland, a desolate. Yes, there are people struggling in different parts of it. There are people struggling in America. You can go outside today and you'll see a homeless person. Go to Appalachia. Right. <laughs> it's a different kind of struggle, but it's like there will always be extremes, like an extremely poor person and an extremely rich person. Like I think too many people have this idea to, of a utopia that's just like, Mm -hmm. okay like once we get there that's it like and where we see being in the first world country as we classify it yeah there are places where yeah we've made it but when we quote unquote made it we have all our basic needs met to where you don't have to struggle about where your next meal is coming from and things mm -hmm. like that we kind of a lot of a lot of times it's like it's easy to move away from, and I'm I'm being cautious not to word use the word we just to put people under an umbrella because I don't like when people just say oh everybody or society. It's like no, speak for right. yourself, and judge yourself. Don't be judging everybody else, or else you'll have judgment placed upon you in the same way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and just to that, it's like when you get the things when I get the things that. I need as the necessities it's mm -hmm. I've, I tend to pay a little less attention to how I got there and like we were saying at the beginning with the podcast like maintaining that that consistency maintaining that schedule to where it's like you bring a certain set of energy to the world by mm -hmm. doing what you need to by being in your purpose by fulfilling your gift that is within and not just looking at okay, what impact am I making? Like, 
it's yes, it's good to measure it. But if you start measuring, if I start measuring by losing sight of what I'm doing mm -hmm. to gain that measurement, then it's like I start to manufacture problems or problems just seem to pop out of nowhere where it's like, okay, this isn't, this isn't the end of the world. Like for instance, um, Hey, Ashley, give, give me, yeah. give, no, keep talking, okay. but I'm just going to let you know that I'm going to, uh, I'm still here. I just got to right. go do something real quick, but okay. keep talking. Right, right, right. So, here. so I, I was just going to say this and I'll, I'll classify it as I'm not saying this to win an award or anything, but, um, what I saw that was more disturbing than anything last year when it started with even having the Corona event or the pandemic, as we've seen it play out, it's that there was so much prompting for, okay, 2020 is going to be everyone's year, 2020 vision, all the great things. And I mean, new year brings all different kinds of, um, goals that people set out, but very soon you have a disease or something on the horizon. Everybody's already doomsday planning. The media especially is just like over and over, just beating you over the head with like, this is coming out of here. This is, it's, it's one thing to inform people, but I think it's another thing to just prepare people for doom and gloom. And I can count to so many times when we were just like, okay, well, this is going to be like, what was it? If it's not Ebola, if it's not the swine flu, if it's not SARS, if it's not a mass shooting, if it's not this, it's like, it's always something. And every time you tune in to just, oh, what's the latest news? Like you're going to get, you're going to get what, what's presented to you and you're going to get you're just going to get what's out there if you're not conscious about what you're doing, where you're supposed to be, if you're fulfilling your gift, if you're fulfilling that thing that you've been called to do. And for me, it became very evident where I decided to sidestep the podcast. And I was like, ah, I don't feel like doing it. I don't feel like going out every morning and walking. But the reason I didn't feel like doing it anymore is because I got caught up watching everyone else i kept watching okay what impact is this having i started aligning myself with other people's goals and i got distracted from my goal that i set out and i just got caught up in the moment and staying caught up i started to tap into sources like news sources and different things like that i wouldn't normally tap into and sometimes i guess i got the comedy aspect out of it but at the same time, there was much loss, but now it's not so much a loss. There, there are a lot of lessons learned along the way where it was just, okay, this is what happens when you don't tune in. This is what happens when you don't keep up with what you should keep up with. When you don't maintain your bank account, you can quickly slip into debt but thankfully <laughs> um having things and systems set in place the systems they'll work to the best of their ability and then when you get yourself back like i'm back now you can kind of pick up right where you left off or reassess where you got off track and then get back on the horse so i forget where i was going with that but i think i was just saying as we were talking about understanding what perversion there point, means. Yeah. There was a point that you said I want to highlight. Okay. You said, you said when you start becoming aligned, under, you start so focused on other people's goals that you lose sight of your own goals. Right. That was a big deal. Gotcha. Right. I, your I, your camera not, isn't back on. I didn't know if you were back. No, 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 no. I'm still, I'm gotcha. kind of, I, okay. I got to, you know, I'm a diabetic, so I got to kind of make sure I eat, eat. Okay. I got you. We, you know, we had been on for a minute and I didn't eat earlier. Oh, right. So, right, right. Yeah. That's the reason why. So, yeah. So I, I'm still here, but I just wanted to comment on that one. Okay. Part. You're good. You're good. I was just, I was just double checking because I know, 
I know there's a there's one uh podcast I recorded I think it was like episode number 18 with Stephen Tots and he was talking we were talking for about an hour and I realized he wasn't on camera but I know some people want to be on camera it's other people don't and then like towards the end of the episode we're like I was like oh I can't see what you're saying he's like oh I thought I was on the whole time and it was so funny <laughs> but when he he got on camera he told the story of um he told me like a quick story about Kobe Bryant and I think we recorded this late 2019 and lo and behold like that first no I think it was the third week of January that's when I put out his episode and I used like the little um teaser trailer to be like okay this is something relevant not only to this week to this episode but it's relevant to a recent event and I didn't plan any of that, but I was like, Oh, wow. <laughs> That's weird how that worked out. But, um, yeah, to what, to what you're saying, we'll definitely come back to that. Um, no rush. I, um, I can wait. I have help with editing now so we can always, um, edit and come back. All right. I can even pause the recording for a second. Okay, let me know when you when, yep. when you're, you're good. There. You're good. Is there pressure when you uh, are from an African family mm -hmm. to do certain things? Like, because you were saying about sometimes they say something about the kind of job you have. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. There, there's 100% pressure because um, I heard Tobe Nwigwi talk about this, and it's like I could echo the same sentiment because the way I've kind of seen it or the way I resonate with it is that you're coming from when we talk about Africa in general, or a lot of Africans that I know, mainly Nigerian and Cameroonian. So that's like West Central Africa right there on the curve. Right. Um, when you talk about pressure coming from Africa, coming from a third world country, I think it's there. And a lot of time, parents will place it on their children because they were the first generation to say, hey, we made it here to this country, the land of opportunity. And for right. my dad, it's like he came, I think, to the States in 92. Um, I finally had a chance to like sit down and record a little bit with him as we were driving. And he kind of talked about it a, little, a bit where I think he came to the United States in 1992 and from then till 97, he was doing seminary school. And in 97, that's when we came. And that's like a miracle story in itself where you have a wife and five kids come over on a visa within a period of a month to a week. And not only that, they come over and you already have a house that that's able to have them all house them all i think it was like a four bedroom house or five bedroom house and we each had our rooms i think i shared a room with my older brother um my sisters i think two of my three sisters shared a room my parents had their room so maybe that's three or four rooms either anyways but like there's that pressure where you come to this place you come from a place one where you didn't have something and then two, once you get here, it's like you have to take advantage of the opportunity. Otherwise, if you go back, you can't go back with nothing. Like you came here, it's almost like you won a lottery ticket. Some people win the lottery, but I don't think, I don't think in our story we did. If that's different, I'll, I'll find out later on. But at least the way the story is told to me, we came here. So the main way that people see as a way out of impoverished countries is that education is the way out. So, so long as you're able to go to school, get an education, get a good job, you're in a much better position than where your parents are and where your family back home is. So in being able to do that, now you can contribute and then bring your family up to the level that you're at. And you see it a lot with like, at least in, in the South, Southeast and Georgia, probably out West too. You see it a lot with the Hispanic community where 
people are always complaining about Hispanics, but like I grew up with Hispanics and I respect them because they have that strong worth that ethic and they're willing to do the job. Always the thing with immigrants is like, we're willing to do the jobs that nobody else will do because it's a step up. Like, you know, experience in the country you at. Right. Right. And it's like, you know, once you do this job, as small as it might be, you're making small money, but you send that back home and that brings you up a level. And it's like, if the folks back home can see that you're helping them, like they're appreciative of that. Like some are, some aren't. So it's like the stories are are different. But to answer your question, there's there is definitely a pressure there. And also the the system in which we kind of learn is much harder like the school system is based on the french system and like the way people are treated there it's like everything is pass fail more or less like you have to make like the highest grade but the mm-hmm. more educated people are seen as like the wealthy the rich the well off as to where here when you read a book like rich dad poor dad it's like the people that are educated that have the school learning those are really the poor like you might, a lot of people might feel bad for like someone that's homeless, someone that doesn't have shoes, that doesn't have this, but it's like, you're extremely poor if you have all this information in your head and you're not able to know that you don't know enough. Like you can't learn every single thing under the sun, but so many people that are educated, and I'm speaking for myself personally, because this is something I had to realize and accept in order to get out of my own way just about everyone that I've met that's educated is extremely arrogant and extremely prideful. And that's something that's a blind spot because it's like you do, you work so hard to get this information and to get the knowledge, but -hmm. then you become very spiteful and very angry and vengeful towards the rich, the person that has the more, the monetary money to buy the things that you would like to buy. A lot of times, Like I've heard it in the house where it's like, oh, well, the rich, I've never met someone that was richer and happier. I've never met someone that's this or money isn't everything. It's like, true, money isn't everything. And if you've only met rich people that are sad and unhappy and bitter and unfulfilled, I'm thinking you're meeting the wrong rich people. Every single rich person isn't the same, just like every single human being isn't the same. So I guess not to go off on a tangent, but I don't like when people just categorize people in groups, whether it's by race or by education or by stature of where you went and what you did, because then that kind of dismisses the individual aspect or the individual responsibility that each person has to their themselves to say, this is what I need to get up and do every day. And I'm going to do it. And then the results will speak for themselves. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm with you. I Both think that. we're coming up on <laughs> two hours, buddy. Yeah. I think <laughs> we, we should probably wrap it up there. I, I appreciate all the time. It's always great yeah, to catch I, up. With I, you. I enjoyed every minute of it. Anytime my wife is fully engaged, it's a blessing. <laughs> yeah. So you, you, you know, you cemented your position in our lives. So if my wife's flowing with you, then I'm flowing with you. So appreciate you that. Need, well, I think we're gonna have way more of these types of calls because I think this thing with the book is gonna blow up, mm-hmm. uh, and not because uh, not because uh, I, I desire for it to blow up. It's an agenda. Mm-hmm. I just think that that, that 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 the book is helping people, right? right? And so that's my my that's my ultimate goal and objective, and and I think the more people that we help, you know the more and I think this podcast will be uh part of that and other things that we do. Right. That'll be a beautiful thing to see. Um yep. is there if if people want to join the group, how would they go about that or if they wanted to reach out to you? Uh the probably the easiest way to reach out to me is to uh connect to uh, I'm gonna put in my uh email Okay. And my wife's email. Okay. And just say that you want to be a part of the focus study groups that we have. We have them in the spring and the fall. 
Okay. We may have something. If we get enough people that want to do it, mm-hmm. then we we'll we'll create something gotcha. that we'll be able to be do to do outside of that. Gotcha. That worked out perfectly because I think this will probably come out right. This will come out right before the fall. So okay, that'd be perfect. Right about um, end of summertime or mid summertime. Yep, and and then I I can kind of explain to people as we uh. Um, I, so I put both mine and my wife's uh, email in the, uh, in the Got chat. It. Got it. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, man. Thank you. Let Thank me, you. I'm trying to copy this real quick before I end the call and then I don't have it. Okay. Uh, okay. I got it. And I saved it in I saved it too in case you need it. Just hit Appreciate me up. you. Okay. Yes. I'll send you those books. Please. And, and, and let's not let's make that an ongoing thing. We both get books, we we shoot out the books to each other. And also make that a point of discussion for each other. For sure. Cool? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, buddy. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye bye. This is the It's My Time Podcast with Asher Chua.